In 1993, children began to disappear without a trace in the small town of Kamensk Shaktinsky. Parents began to accompany their daughters and sons to school lessons and stopped letting them go for a walk after them. The local police organized a search for missing schoolchildren and potential criminals. The maniac Bertsev preyed on children in the small town of Kamensk. The dashing 90s allowed him to hide from justice for several years. Before starting, I want to ask you not to forget to like, subscribe to the channel and write your opinion on this story. Perhaps some people are already tired of me saying all this, but it is after these words that the videos begin to move better and five times more people subscribe than usual. The Rostov region has become notorious for the number of serial killers and maniacs who appeared there. It would seem that after Chikatilo there will be a lull, but no. A few years later, as the Rostov Ripper was caught, a new maniac started up in the region. Roman Bertsev, an unremarkable, quiet and modest guy made his first trip to the law in 1993. He worked at a machine building plant in the city of Kamensk, was married and was, as they say, a gray mass. He dared to commit his first crime at the age of 22. The serial maniac earned the nickname Kamensky Chikatilo operated in 1993-96 years. Alexander Bukanovsky, a well-known psychiatrist who worked with him, stated that Bertsev, one of the brightest maniacs in his entire practice. Roman was born in 1971 in the city of Kamensk Shaktinsky, where he subsequently committed all his crimes. The family was extremely dysfunctional, the parents drank heavily and did not deal with the child, so the boy grew up an introvert and could hardly communicate with others. Bursov made his first attempt at abuse at the age of 13, a transitional age for a boy, when he dragged a 12-year-old girl into the basement in order to use her. Fortunately, the local janitor noticed it in time and prevented the crime. Roman was registered in the children's room of the police. But, despite such a beginning, no one could then suspect him of a future mania. After graduating from school, Bertsev joined the army, and when he returned, he got married. But the first wife turned out to be no longer innocent, and this became a serious trauma for the man. He wanted to marry an innocent girl. He remarried, a son was born from this marriage, and at the same time began to cherish the dream of finding true purity. Roman often offered to meet schoolgirls, but only those who already had sexual experience agreed to contact him. This assured the future maniac that only very young girls can be unspoiled. On the 5th of September, 1993, he saw his brother and sister playing near a landfill on the outskirts of the city. First he took the life of a boy who was 12 as an unnecessary witness, and then he took advantage and took the life of a girl who was only seven. I hid the bodies in a garbage pit. They immediately started looking for the guys, but at first there were absolutely no leads. And Roman, who was terrified of being discovered and caught, lay low. However, after making sure that the guards were not going to come, he began to prepare for a new massacre. The next victim was 12-year-old Marina Alexeva. The maniac took her life almost a year after the first episode, in July of the 94th. And as for the first time it was quiet again for a year. Then the attack happened already in May of the 95th, then in July of the 96th. This behavior was uncharacteristic for maniacs who attacked minors. Usually, even after taking a one-year break and going hunting again, they quickly broke down and could no longer withstand such long pauses. But Bertsev was clearly very patient. Perhaps it was this feature that Bukhanovsky singled out when he called him the most unusual maniac of those with whom he had to communicate. Nevertheless, Roman, like all other maniacs, dreamed of putting the case on stream. It was just that his innate caution prevented him from doing it right away. After waiting for three whole years, he finally dared to crack down with an interval of only two weeks. On the 1st of July, he also took the life of Rudinovskia, nine years old, and on the 16th of July, 96, to Natasha Kerbobin, 12 years old.
At the time of the last crime, he was only 25 years old. The maniac was sincerely sure that he would not be caught, he believed in his own strength, and in part Burtsev was right. In all these three years, not even a single witness to his crimes has been found. Of course, the dashing 90s also played a role, when there were not enough personnel in law enforcement agencies for full-fledged work with a staggering number of crimes. The main uniqueness of Roman Burtsev is the ability to hide bodies, because for all three years they have not been found. Most maniacs sometimes unconsciously wanted to be discovered without hiding the victims. And for Burtsev, on the contrary, it was important to satisfy his own desire with the ability to satisfy it again and again without risk. Roman was let down, on the one hand, by the desire to hide the traces of the crime, and on the other, the desire to put reprisals on stream. Having taken the life of the last victim, Natasha Kerbabina, two weeks after the previous one, Roman decided that it was necessary to bury the body, but he did not have a shovel with him. And then the maniac went to the nearest village and borrowed a shovel from a local resident, and then just threw it away. But the woman, of course, remembered the guy who did not return her gardening tools. And when the search for the missing girl began, the woman described a suspicious stranger. One of the signs was a characteristic scar on the cheek. The investigator leading the case, Roman Amiv, began checking people who fit the description and stopped at the figure of Roman Burtsev. The clue was also the fact that in his youth he was listed as an attempt of abuse. First, his colleagues and acquaintances were interviewed. The maniac had no close friends. From the dialogue with them, it was only possible to find out that the guy was an ardent fan of recordings with films and magazines for adults. Of course, this fact did not prove anything yet but just in case they decided to detain the young man. It is curious that Roman's boss directly gave him the characterization of a dark horse. And indeed, it turned out that the colleagues did not know much about this quiet and withdrawn guy. In fact, the investigators had nothing at all on Burtsev, except the testimony of the notorious village grandmother. Surprisingly, it was these indications about the shovel that prompted the maniac to confess. Of course, this happened thanks to the competent work of the investigators. The criminal was simply pinned to the wall and, unable to withstand the pressure, he confessed. At first, only in taking Natasha's life. But there is also a downside to this, which many locals have talked about. At that time, it was customary to literally lead a person to confession or try to convince him of committing something by force. Anyway, we won't know what really happened, and I would like to believe that Burtsev was really guilty. However, the investigators who worked with the criminal understood that such a person definitely could not limit himself to one victim, and decided to continue talking with the maniac. Slowly, he began to confess to other reprisals, but only one at a time. First, he showed where he hid the body of the penultimate victim, Ira Ternovskaya. Then, a few days later, he revealed the location of the bodies of Anya Kolinkina and Marina Alexeva. The maniac explained the abuse by saying that sexual intercourse with an adult woman did not bring him proper pleasure. He was looking for sincere purity. The deprivation of life was explained very simply. I was afraid of exposure. During the investigation, Burtsev repeatedly tried to imitate insanity in order to mislead investigators, but a psychological and psychiatric examination showed his complete sanity. Seeing that they did not believe in his madness, Roman refused, stopped testifying and fell silent. But the investigators managed to crack the criminal this time too. He showed where he hid the bodies of the first two victims, Genya and Oksana Churilov, as specified, at the time of the arrest of the criminal, no one knew where the bodies were hidden. Alexander Bukhanovsky, a psychiatrist who worked with Burtsev, noted that he, depriving the lives of boys and girls, imagined himself as a villain from films. He enjoyed turning the victims over on their stomachs and strangling them, holding their mouth and nose with his hand. At the trial, the maniac begged for mercy, but the verdict read, the death penalty. Nevertheless, Roman Burtsev was lucky. Soon a moratorium on the death penalty was declared, 
and Kamensky Chikatilo went to a colony for life prisoners. At the time of the creation of this video, Bertsev is alive, and now he is in the White Swan prison in Solikomsk. Recently, Roman has been constantly complaining about his well-being and writing pitying letters to various foundations that help prisoners. The letters ask to send him medicines and lists his illnesses. Several documentaries have been made about him, where you can learn more about his history. The Triangle of Death series from the transmission cycle is inexplicable, but a fact. The Dashing 90s, The Heirs of Chikatilo. Crimes against children have always been considered the most terrible and unforgivable. Studying Bertsev's criminal biography, it's hard to believe that a healthy and sane person could have done all this. And yet, the conducted forensic psychiatric examinations made it possible to establish exactly that the criminal was aware of all his actions. Don't forget to like and write your opinion about this story.